In the last video, I made a prototype of a top-down controller and a camera rig inspired by Dakov. So what's next? Well, as we already went to 3D action game, I'm going to continue and create a whole series about learning Godot by making 3D game. So take a coffee and enjoy the episode. First, let's make a plan. So we created a project, last time we created a player character, and we set up a basic camera and movement. So our next step is a core game loop. So core game loop is essentially uh, all time moment to moment actions the player do during the game. In our case, I want a game loop to be very simple, but from the other side include all mechanics I really love to play and would like to actually know how to implement in Godot. We can describe it in a simple four steps. The first step is exploration. The character moves through the map, find points of interest, some treasures, gather resources, and find some unique hidden secrets. So the second part is a combat system. Obviously, if you're making a survival extraction, we need some enemies and some high tension, high reward system. Loot itself is a very important part. So besides we getting loot from enemies, we also need to introduce loot management systems. And finally, closing the loop, we getting back to hideout and we do some crafting, preparation, potentially trading. Even such a simple core loop will require a lot of system. So I separated them into primary and secondary. The combat and inventory system are primary system that we're going to focus next couple of weeks. Once they're done, we go on to secondary system, crafting and potentially quest, task and reward system. And I would like to start from my probably favorite mechanic, exploration. I broke down the exploration into a couple of steps. First of all, we need a test level with a little map that we're gonna explore. We need to create some terrains and props. We also need to set up resources and pickable items and probably gonna provide some loot. This will give us like at least the first step in our core loop and we already can start playing. So the plan looks reasonable and doable. Let's get started. First, we need to understand the pipeline. The most game production pipeline usually starts from sculpting. Sculpting is a produce high poly mesh and also you can bake a bunch of different textures like normals, ambient occlusion, reflection, sharpness and so on. Once you get the high poly, you need to produce a low poly model by retopologizing. Depends on your poly budget or specific platform, it's mobile or Steam. Once you have a low poly mesh, you need to produce a rig, attach bones, paint, paint wages to make sure the deformation is correct. Once you're done rigging, the next step, texturing, when you basically apply colors, hand paint or PBR texturing. And finally, you produce a bunch of animations to move your character and make it run, walk, jump and so on. The exact sequence of this pipeline not necessarily like that. You can start texturing curly, but overall it's preliminary the same. For our prototype, I'm gonna do a slightly simpler. First, I'm gonna create a mesh right in Blender, and I'm also gonna texture right in Blender, and then I'm gonna do animation right in Godot. So we're gonna save tons of time. So if there is a one advice I would like to give you for this part is get Blender and please start investing your time to learn it. Right, let's do some modeling. A lot of tutorials I watch on YouTube recommends to start from making low poly. Even saying that low poly is simple. Well, in fact, I believe that low poly is actually harder. You need to really understand the volume and silhouette of your model to actually produce a high quality low poly model. I'm going to show you a simpler method that I use to produce my prototype model and it essentially, you take in a box and you use a subdivision surface modifier that actually allow you to produce smooth shapes without actually modeling manually. You can apply three, two or three subdivisions. What you do next is basically go to edit mode and you can start blocking. Uh, depending on your shape, you can add like some loops to shift uh, scale or some areas to produce such shape manually like using low poly methods is like really crazy tons of work if you need to add more you just 
create another cube and repeat the same operation several times and basically you have like really simple foam shape even such mesh is way better for your prototyping that regular building cylinder so this is exactly the same method i used to create this character just spend a little bit more time it's essentially contains from one two three four cubes with subdivision surface modifiers and two the same cubes for eyes. I also use a geometry node a little bit just to apply this noise pattern uh, and bake it into the texture. Actually, I recommend to bake the noise first and do like all this like PBR kind of texturing first and then do a hand paint pass on that. Like if you need to draw eyes and like some nose. Anyway, this is gonna work. This should be enough for our prototype. Basically to produce this model, you need just to know uh, subdivision surface and mirror modifiers and blender also you need to know how to uv unwrap but it should be pretty simple because uv smart project actually does all the work in blender in most of the time and if you do an extra step you can try to learn a little bit about geometry nodes to make a procedurally generated texture all right now let's take a look how we import character into Godot and how to set up animation. First, we need to export our file as GLB from Blender and just to save it into the folder directory and Godot will automatically import the model textures and materials. We got the player structure from previous tutorial. So we have a player node, character 3D. We have a new our frog model. We have collider capsule, camera rig, and we have three new components for animation. Let's start from animation player. So animation player is a node that actually stores the library of different animations. The library can be imported from other software. You can actually create a manual animations right in Godot. I created two. I have an empty animation, just does nothing. It's a placeholder to use it in uh, state tree later and we have a move animation move animation i basically create a keyframes to move uh, model up and down so it will look like this make sure you keep animation looping if you want to have a continuously playing this animation into state machines second component is animation tree uh, godot has several ways to set up animation also different tutorials show one or another way as a proper one i don't think godot designed in a way that one solution fits everything and you actually can pick and try different ways let me show you the first way i used and why it doesn't work let's create another copy of animation tree animation not blend trim this very useful node-based system to actually switch between different animations based on uh, parameters. It has pretty cool node transition and in transition you can set up different states, idle or move. We need to make sure that our library animation player with our library of animation assigned to this tree. This setup is essentially the simplest way to have different states. You don't need a state machine. This node is enough. The only problem with this node when I started to work, the transition node doesn't support loop animation. There is an active bug in Godot GitHub repositories that prevents actually using this uh, configuration to work. Uh, in the next version of Godot 4.6 it should be fixed and I'll probably try to switch to this configuration and at least test it out. So in our case I use State Machine which has on just two nodes, Idle and Move. Uh, by default it's Idle animation, it's empty, nothing. And when we move we're gonna play Transit to the Move animation. So there is a couple of ways to do a transition. One way is to set up advanced uh, conditions here, but in that case you need to control a bunch of in condition variables, like which also not necessarily a simple way to track it. So uh, I created this controller where essentially I just call travel and switch one mode to another without automatically switch between them using conditions. And this is another interesting uh, example of um, over-engineering in a lot of tutorials uh, where people 
use those composite state machines for different states as separate nodes and then for each state for each state they have like a bunch of events like exit state enter state uh, processing and stuff um, i don't think it's necessarily needed especially at the initially at the beginning when the only difference between those states is like what animations to play uh, the simplest way would be actually to have a map between player state and handler and you based on the current player state you get this like handler from the map and call it like switching it's pretty simple configuration and allow you to handle each state separately but at the same time have all uh, state machine animation logic in one simple file instead of spreading like a bunch of different nodes. I don't really want to have a single idle node and have animation and different logic in the same file. So I prefer this uh, separate animation state handlers and separate like other state handlers. Anyway, we can always refactor if we need it. Uh, as of now, like let's keep it as simple as possible. And what it does is basically when our characters stay on the place, it does nothing. It's only rotate toward the mouse. Have the same camera control as like from previous tutorial. And when we move, it does this like simple animation. That cho choose position. And again, for prototype and from this early stage, it's pretty much enough actually to keep it going. Uh, in the next tutorial, I'm gonna tell you about how I set up this environment. Uh, it's pretty interesting setup. Uh, it requires a couple of shaders. Um, those map is generated uh, based on uh, texture. Those grass also uh, generated procedurally based on the position on the map. So it doesn't generate on the ground, uh, on the road, but it actually does generate on the grass. And for now, like I just use a standard scattering for different props, but later I also gonna update the scattering to more smart algorithm depending on this uh, uh, texture of different zones on our level map. So that's enough for today. The next episode gonna be in a week. Please leave in the comments if you like to change the format, maybe add more detailed tutorial uh, about coding or designing or modeling. Otherwise, I'm going to keep the same format. I want to really try to move it forward uh, without st stacking on the single step because there is a many interesting systems and features uh, in the future. So we need to make sure our scope manageable, compact enough and really tight to keep going. I also invite you to follow along and try build your game uh, along those tutorials and videos. Uh, I think we together can build a lot of, a lot of cool stuff. So please leave a comment, subscribe and see you later.